Здравствуйте, товарищи! Welcome to a new video. In this video, I will be talking about the Soviet winter kit of the Winter War. So, basically, everybody knows about the Winter War, I presume. It was the conflict between Finland and Soviet Union during with which uh, Finland inflicted heavy casualties on the Soviet Union. Obviously, Finns were defending their homes and Soviets were invading them because Soviets wanted to create a buffer zone between Leningrad, today St. Petersburg, and, you know, potential invasion plans of the Nazi Germany. It's all complicated, which we're not really going to be getting into. But there's a major misconception about the Winter War. Whenever you watch a documentary or get, you know, have a lecture about it or have a visiting speaker, they always mention how terrible the winter clothing of the Soviet soldiers were. So, basically what is told generally is that the Soviet Union was so terrible, so ill-prepared, that they simply did not have winter clothing. Well, I'm afraid to burst your historical bubble, but they definitely did have winter clothing, as seen by numerous photographs numerous accounts of original items left over from the war archives, even prisoner of war photographs, you can definitely see that the Soviets did have winter kits. But was it enough for the Finnish winter? Well, a lot of people forget the fact that these uniforms are, to an extent, only, you know, protect you for, to a certain degree. They are not ideal for conditions that are not, you know, they're designed for. So you do see winter clothing being not adequate enough for the soldier's survival. But there are also other things such as, you know, supplies, rest, you know, changing the troops and letting them, getting fresh troops sent in, getting the ones who have seen combat back to the, uh, back, to the back, back of the lines in order to, you know, let them rest, recuperate and, you know, general stuff. The Finns were perfect with this. They had, you know, field kitchens in the back of the lines. They had facilities that would, you know, house soldiers from the cold winter and let them relax at least for a few hours or a day or two. But the Soviets, they didn't have, they didn't have any of these. And I would say, honestly, with most conflicts, whether you have the terrible weather conditions, rest and a good, uh, good supplies is the main thing that actually keeps the soldiers alive, not the quality of the coats they're wearing. So, with that out of the way, I think it would be a great start to talk about what the winter kit was like for the Soviet soldier, average Soviet soldier, that is. Basically, from starting from the top, you see the infamous, or the famous, whichever side you're on, the, the Budanovka hat. But during the uh, Russian Civil War, it was called the Bogotyrka. But during the Russian Civil War, a certain cavalry commander named Semyon Mikhailovich Bidionyin, which I'm sorry, I can't really pronounce the name properly because my Russian is not good, became so famous for his use of the Bogotyrka that the new models were named after him. The Budanovka has a simple construction uh, made out of flannel wool which is gray has a large star which denotes the you know branch of service it does have a neck flap and ear flaps which were used in order to cover up the face during winter time i would say that it doesn't actually have good insulation qualities compared to something like an ushanka which came after this the Budanoka was designed to be actually used together with a helmet. Uh, that's the main reason why the top of the Budanoka is actually shorter compared to the older models. And the helmet that was used during the conflict was the SSH-36 helmet, as you can see here. It was a cross between a German Stahlhelm and a French Adrian which obviously the Russians actually had some leftover ones from the Imperial Russian times. And I said Russian. The SSH-36 helmet was given to be used, obviously, on top of the Budanoka. That's the main reason why you have actually a shorter spiky end on the top. But soldiers, for some reason, 
did not actually like wearing them together. It was harder to wear with the helmet, even with the shortened top. So you see a lot of photographs of soldiers not even wearing helmets, which obviously increases the amount of dead casualties instead of wounded casualties. The main uniform obviously consists of the OBR-35 gimnasturka and the Shalavari trousers, breeches, as well as the grey coat, which was issued all year around. But during winter time, it was also supplemented with Telegorica, which is a padded jacket that's supposed to be issued only during winter period, which gives extra insulation properties for the grey coat. And grey coats are designed to be used with these um, Telegoricas. And in photographs, you can clearly see sometimes, especially with the POWs, their grey coats simply disappear and you only see the Telegoricas quite possibly because either they were captured or these soldiers weren't even issued grey coats. Obviously, in general, Soviet soldiers were equipped in a very similar way overall. However, sometimes supplies and, you know, supplies being cut short and the sheer amount of soldiers needed to be issued can cause problems for, you know, getting the, getting the kit issued. One thing that is very important that is usually seen in photographs is the footwear of a Soviet soldier. You see the felt boots, the valenki being used a lot. Obviously, it's the main winter footwear of the Soviet soldier. I quickly must say that I have to thank my girlfriend for gifting me these nice valenki. Quite like them, actually. They're really nice. But you also see the regular uh, sapogi being used as well, which obviously would not have been ideal considering below 45 degrees uh, zero. I think it's not really a good idea to be wearing tight leather boots, which constrict circulation and frostbite is a real killer in these situations. Overall, the Soviets were issued winter kits, but was it enough for the conditions they faced during it, during the Winter War? I would say it was adequate. It was adequate, but it wasn't something that would have been good enough for them to survive. With proper facilities that the Finns had, perhaps the odds of a Soviet soldier not getting frostbite or, you know, being a casualty because of the weather would have been decreased exponentially. But alas, we know this did not happen. Obviously, when we consider the situation in Finland, without back of the line facilities for the soldiers to rest and recuperate, it is basically not going to help them a lot. The Finns had those facilities, and that's one of the main reasons you see Finns not actually having as much cold uh, weather casualties as the Soviets had. So I believe when we're talking about the Winter War, it is important to not blame the uniforms of the soldiers not being good enough. We should be blaming the basically the incompetence of the Soviet commanders to understand the situation at hand and create not being able to create facilities for soldiers to rest, just like, uh, like the Finns did. So I would say it wasn't the way the uniform won, it was basically the commander's fault for not being able to support their men in these terrible conditions. I hope you guys learned something about this video and please comment down below if you have anything to say. Please do subscribe, like the video, comment, do anything you want. I would appreciate it regardless. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next one.